What helps the Yakut horses survive in severe climate conditions? What racer is the holder of the Invincible Ones title? How many years did the world's oldest horse live? What did the most dangerous horse stand out for? Answers to these and other questions you'll learn from this episode. Today, I'll tell you about the most interesting horses in the world. Naval Pride This is the name of one very beautiful, fast, and intelligent horse, which at the same time is considered by some to be the most dangerous horse in the world. Why is this so? And why was it awarded such a title? I'll tell you now about that. The horse was born in 1965 in the United States of America. The horse almost immediately found its owner and began to please him with success in terms of racing. The Nivelle Pride took the leading places and set world records. Everything was going great, but as time went on, age began to take its toll. The horse was no longer as sharp as before. Its performance went down, and the owner decided to send his best friend to a quiet retirement. Only, as it turned out, it didn't definitely calm down. Nivelle Pride has always been considered a very sharp horse, which gave out simply amazing values at the start. However, in the long term, it was inferior to the others. The same tendency was noticed in the behavior. The horse could easily flare up, literally on a flat surface. Whoever was entrusted with the care of this animal, everyone disowned it. They said that it was completely disobedient and, among other things, always wanted to bite. And you won't believe it, according to the groom's stories, Navel Pride loved chewing tobacco, donuts, and beer. I don't know who thought of giving it those things, but the animal didn't mind. In the future, a muzzle was put on the horse as a precaution. However, our four-legged guest soon learned to take it off. As a result, at the entrance to his house hung a sign informing people that they'd better not approach this horse, it can bite. And interestingly enough, people didn't really go near it, even though we're naturally inquisitive. But if people don't go to Naval Pride, it goes to people. One day, the horse managed to escape. Panic broke out in the whole village where it lived. One stable boy locked himself in a stall, another crawled under a car. In short, this handsome fellow made a lot of noise. Take this, it's a peaceful retirement. In spite of such aggressive and rather dangerous behavior, Everybody loved this horse and could not help being upset when it died in 1993. Because of his healthy lifestyle and constant movement, Nivelle Pride lived quite a long life, more than 28 years. Usually in the horse world, an age of 30 is considered a straight edge. Only certain breeds of ponies live longer. Shire Horse This is the name of the proud British breed of horses about which we are going to talk. Representatives of this breed are considered the tallest among horses. Their height at the withers varies from 5 foot 5 inches to 6 foot 8 inches. Sometimes it reaches 7 foot 2 inches. This, if anything, I'm talking about the record-breaking Samson, born in 1846. Being almost 7 foot 2 inches tall, it weighed over 1.5 tons. It's frightening to imagine what this giant was capable of. It's believed that large representatives of this breed can easily move even a large car that weighs two to three tons. It's quite easy to guess that since these horses were bred long ago, they were actively used by warriors. The stamina of shires was more than enough to carry knights, even with the heaviest armor. Also, you wouldn't think of it, but shires are used for plowing competitions. Yes, yes, there are such things. Frankel. On the 11th of February, 2008, the world saw a wonderful foal named Frankel. On that day, nobody could have imagined how legendary and important this horse would become for the whole equestrian community. So, Frankel's first debut race was in 2010. It beat all the favorites and pretty decently frayed people's nerves. Then another victory was added to the horse's piggy bank, followed by one more and then some more. In total, Frankel took part in 14 big races and came first in all of them without exception. The head trainer of this handsome horse was Henry Cecile, and Frankel was ridden by Tom Queeley. The horse retired in 2012 and was placed in luxury conditions not far from the city in a private and free stable. It could have a good rest there and also continue the line. Old Billy 
I think by the name of our next guest, you already realize what it's famous for. Old Billy is the longest lived horse in the world. People have recorded that at the time of its death, it was, you won't believe it, 62 years old. A lot of people don't live to be that old. And here's a horse. It's crazy. And don't think that Billy lived so long because of its quiet and completely unstressed life. On the contrary, at one time it was a regular workhorse pulling a barge along the canals. At the time, horsepower was particularly in demand. So Billy didn't have much in the way of other options. Another curious fact, in its lifetime, up to about 50 years old, this horse was described as extremely vicious. It was said that when it was having lunch, the animal could suddenly start banging its hooves or gnashing its teeth. This informed people that the animal was anxious to be alone with itself. Probably, like all good workers, Billy considered that its free time was its own. Therefore, it didn't want to share it with anyone. Camarillo This is the name of the breed of horse we're going to talk about. I'll tell you right away, its age is only a little over 100 years and it's known for its pure snow white color. But the name Camarillo does not only refer to horses, but also the name of a small province and the name of a man who did a lot of good for this place. His name was Adolfo. It's thanks to him that such beautiful horses originated in this province. Adolfo bought an ancestral sultan stallion at a fair in California. The horse became famous for his extraordinary beauty, article, and ability to transmit a dominant white color. Foals from Sultan and his grandchildren were consistently born true white. It's not as easy as it seems at first glance to understand how unique this racehorse was. To do this, you need to delve a little deeper into the genetics of horse colors. The true white horses are something insanely rare in themselves, and their stable reproduction even more. To date, it's known that white horses can be different. For example, they can have a gene of early gray hair from birth. In this case, the horse will not be white, but rather light gray. The second variant of events is when a horse has spots all over its body, or rather one big and white spot, making it look as if it were snow white. This gene is very insidious. If both parents are carriers of this gene, there is a 50% chance of giving birth to a foal with the so-called Overo syndrome. This is a condition in which the horse's intestines are not fully developed and prevent it from eating properly. Even worse, these foals may look quite healthy at birth, but they'll die of ailments in a couple of days. And the third, most understudied variant is when the so-called W gene is dominant in the horse's body. It's believed to be the dominant gene that makes the full skin snow white. Everything is much rosier here than in the previous case, but there is still room for risk. If you cross two carriers of this gene, there's only a 50% chance of a fully healthy horse being born. And now back to Sultan. As you may recall, it has successfully passed on its white coloration and has never produced a sick foal. The Camarillo family sponsored many urban projects developed agriculture and thus promoted their horses to the masses. Such fame lasted until 1987 when the property was finally sold off after the death of one of their family members. For two years, there was no word about the horses until a group of enthusiasts took care of the revival of the ungulates in 1989. A special association of Camarillo white horses was created and a special genetic test was devised to identify them. While some people are surprised by the huge size of horses or how white they are, there are equally amazing Falabella horses being born in the world, famous for their miniature size. Although, you know, to say miniature in their case is even a little humiliating. Representatives of this breed are considered the smallest among horses in the world. They were bred in Argentina and active work on the breed was carried out from the end of the 19th to the middle of the 20th century. These horses were also named in honor of the family who devoted many years to breeding these cubs. It's interesting that the person who first thought of breeding such horses consciously wanted to make them so small. Falabella's height at the withers varies from 25 to 34 inches. Unfortunately, no one has told the true reason for breeding such small horses. So if you suddenly have your own theories about this, write them in the comments. Today, this breed is unique in that each new generation is born smaller and smaller, 
and the gene responsible for small growth in these animals is stronger than in ordinary horses. Breeders have confirmed this by crossing the little ones with full-sized individuals. Despite the miniature appearance, representatives of the Falabella breed look quite decent and proportional. When you see them, you get the impression that someone took an ordinary horse and reduced it several times on some extraterrestrial machine. No wonder these creatures are often used as decorative animals. Riding them is, of course, forbidden. For that matter, if someone really wants to ride an unusual horse, let him look for a zebroid. Have you heard of them? A zebroid is, as you can understand by the name, a hybrid of a zebra with a pony, horse, or donkey. Typically, breeders use a male from a zebra and females from other animals. Otherwise, they get some unknown monster resembling an unkempt animal. However, to breed such a horse is only a small part of success. The fact is that because of the big difference in the structure of chromosomes, male zebroids are infertile and females can give birth only by miracle. Because of this, it's not easy to track the population of these horses and quality control is out of the question. If it were only a reproductive problem, it would be a drop in the ocean. Another obvious problem with these animals is their stubborn and aggressive nature. If they do not like something, they'll immediately make every effort to solve the problem. In addition, the beasts are very strong, which, given the character, flows into another noticeable disadvantage. But if you still take a dim view of this and look at the world from a different angle, the situation may be transformed. Yes, they may not be able to breed normally, but they have truly exotic coloration. This makes their breeding factor even rarer than we might think. Plus, as I said, they're strong. That means they're also endurable. In addition, zebroids are resistant to parasites. This is what makes them great for farming. Tsetse flies, for example, are no threat to them. It seems to me that the truth about these creatures lies somewhere in the middle between the two extreme versions. They're not as bad as one might think, but at the same time, they're nowhere near as good as they could be. What do you think about them? Yakut Horse It's not hard to guess that the next horse we're going to talk about is common in Yakutia. The breed was developed by folk selection under the strong influence of natural selection. Today, they're creatures that are not afraid of even the most terrible frost. Even if temperature outside the window will be under negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit, they'll calmly endure it and even find food in such hellish conditions. Despite the fact that these horses are relatively compact, about 4 foot 3 inches to 4 foot 7 inches high at the withers, they can weigh up to 1,100 pounds. This cannot help but cause surprise. It seems that such a large weight is completely unnecessary for them, but not in this case. Thanks to it, they're able to keep warm for longer. At the same time, the dense coat, which reaches 3 inches in length, provides a reliable insulation between the internal and external environment. But that, as they say, is a Sunday school picnic. The main thing is what is stored inside Yakut horses. It's said that they have a filigree vascular system that's perfectly controlled by the horses themselves. Blood is the main carrier of heat inside the body, so the horses themselves choose where and when it should be dispersed. Just as skillfully, they manage their metabolism slowing down or speeding it up depending on the season. And since Yakut horses are their own directors in the main aspects of life, they live peacefully without any help from people. Their herds walk by themselves, find their own food, and solve internal conflicts by themselves. Just like the Camarge, or as they're also called, seahorses. They run freely on vast pastures, breathing freely and not knowing anything about stables at all. Only about once a year, the locals gather all these animals, check them for diseases, age and other nuances, and then release them back. Their endurance and agility were appreciated by the ancient Romans. They were also used by the Celts. Plus, it's believed that these horses could be the origin of the Spanish horses that helped conquistadors to seize America. But how do these creatures manage to survive without human intervention? It's down to their unpretentious bodies. Reeds, tough grass, any other plant, anything will do for a hearty meal. And these horses are also very hardy. They can withstand heat and cold and are not afraid of strong winds. They do not even need to be shooed because their hooves are already very strong. 
In the 19th century, for example, the Camargue breed of horses was often used for heavy labor. They carried unimaginable loads and unfortunately quickly lost their health. Fortunately, people quickly came to their senses and stopped hunting them, allowing them to live as they wished. Although some very strange people still continued to exploit this breed. They were motivated by the fact that they were able to work even at the age of 20, which is amazing for the horse world. That's about it. Write in the comments what horse surprised you most of all. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel.